What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be diving into an Orzhov control build that I built towards rotation uh, with the fact of not playing any of the cards that we rotate in outcome September 1st in MTG Arena. It is still a little bit early to really be putting together a deck like this, but I figured I'd try to start exploring whether or not Orzhov will still be playable as it loses some key cards come September. Uh, you know, from some of the cards to note that the deck does lose, it loses its two value like one drops that the deck, uh, you know, typically plays just because they are good benefit they, they are good sacrifice fodder or, or stuff that you get a benefit of it when they go to the graveyard eye twitch and shambling gas we also lose out all the learn cards that you typically would play maybe in orzov control deck so we lose out on ways to you know environmental sciences we lose out on we lose out on mascot expedition with the learn card so it's definitely one of those things that you know as those cards leave uh, we kind of lose a little bit of that way to gain additional momentum. We also lose out on Molt, the Spider Queen, uh, with the rotation, as it is kind of like that top end Planeswalker that allows us to kind of, you know, prevent a lot of the damage that you typically would uh, would be getting from things in the air as well as things on the ground. It also really, it also was really good alongside of things like Meat Hook Massacre, as you know, the spiders would die, we drain our opponent, and then we get counters on Molt to then reproduce the spiders and kind of drain them yet again. Another card that we lost is Blood on the Snow, kind of a way to get back any of our creatures that would have ended up dying back onto the battlefield and or our planeswalkers that would have died in the process back on the planes, uh, back on the playing field with our snow mana that we would have played. We're also losing snow mana uh, post rotation, so we won't be able to play any of our, you know, the snow cards, uh, let alone the snow lands. And, and, you know, with a control deck, you know, outside of playing a bunch of creatures, typically the way we get aggressive in a control deck would that you would be playing creature lands uh, in the current standard. Uh, so we lose out on Cave of the Frost, Dra uh, Frost Dragon and also Hive of the Eye Tyrant. So definitely two key land cards that help us kind of stay a little bit aggressive against our opponent. And then Pathways was kind of like the nice bridge between, uh, you know, because we are a multicolor, you know, two color deck, uh, depending on what we need in that situation, we either play it on the black or white side and help us fix our mana. But outside of that, you know, this is kind of the list that we're going with. It is a little bit on the greedy side, as, you know, I am playing Invoke Despair as kind of like one of our big top end cards. But I do think, you know, with the, you know, amount of dual lands that I still have in the deck, even though some of them are tap dual lands that they come in the battlefield tap, regardless of what uh, part of the game you're, these come in, uh, it's definitely one of those things that will kind of hopefully help us allow us to play that Invoke Despair. Outside of that, you know, we are kind of adding some cards that hopefully fill up those additional slots because we don't have ways to get into our learn board and get things like environmental sciences. We have like ambitious farmhand as a way to kind of search our library for a planes card, put it into our hand in a shuffle, which would definitely help out a lot. We are playing Bankbuster in the deck. Uh, Farewell is kind of like our six drop uh, removal spell that, you know, we get to exile artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and graveyards. I think this is kind of that area, depending on, you know, where things go with the meta and whatnot. I think this is one of those areas where you could maybe switch up this removal spell as we, you know, the one thing we don't really want to exile uh, you know all this stuff all the time but i think with the way the current meta is if you still want to play this deck uh, i would say this is still a pretty decent card uh as in some of my play testing i did get it matched up against the deck that was playing snow mana so removing their graveyard uh you know was definitely a benefit because then they couldn't put on the snow get back their stuff so it's definitely one of those things that is good in the current meta but it is something that would probably shift as we kind of see how the meta develops and if there are any decks that are playing around graveyard strategies whether or not you need a removal that does stuff like that but Yet again, exile effects are great. So exile and all these things are definitely good, but it doesn't target planeswalkers as well. So that's kind of a, you know, a whiff. But you know, that's kind of why we're playing things like Invoke Despair. We're playing things like uh, Rite of Oblivion to kind of be those spot removal spells to kind of hopefully get rid of those non -land, pesky non-land permanents that, you know, our our typical removal wouldn't be able to hit. Um, we are very heavy on tokens for the most part as well as you think see things like wedding announcement We're also playing Edgar. We're playing Soren. We are playing Wandering Emperor Definitely ways that we're gonna be able to produce creatures on the battlefield without actually having to cast them um, You know, it's definitely one of those things that is still very beneficial to have uh, I think you know Edgar is definitely very good even in current meta because like Banish Reverse doesn't target it And if they do, do destroy it, it is one of those things that we still get a value out of it when it becomes the coffin uh, Then eventually we could flip it back and it becomes a creature back on the battlefield but nonetheless you know it's definitely a deck that i do think we'll kind of see how it develops i do think it's in a pretty decent place i think this is like my fourth or fifth iteration on it just because early on i played 24 lands and i felt like i was not getting my land so i went up to 26 so i made some cuts and you know kind of adjusted some of the numbers for some of the cards so we're going to dive into some rank play kind of see how we do against the current meta uh, it is something that, you know, we are at a disadvantage because we are only playing with four sets. So it is definitely something to kind of see how the deck still performs. But I do think it's a deck that once it kind of gets going, it can definitely grind out some games. 
Um, opponent goes first. Our hand is... It's not great, right? We're missing a land, but we're on the draw. Um, so it is one of those things whether or not we want to keep. We do have two meat hooks. We have a Wandering Emperor, and we have uh, Edgar and a Wet Announcement. So if we can draw two lands, we'll definitely be good. If we don't, we're kind of in a bad spot, especially if we are a little bit on the aggressive side. But I think I'm going to keep because we do get two draws to hopefully find that land that we're, that we're needed. And we get one, and we'll play our tap land. You know, we, we, we probably want to get that out of the way since that's one of those lands that doesn't come in the battlefield untapped at any point in the game. And it looks like we are against the good old, uh, whatchamacallit, Boros Agra. So definitely not a good matchup for us in the sense that we our, our hand is a little bit slow. We don't have any of our spot removal. And it looks like they've drawn pretty good um, with what they got going on here. So we definitely just have to survive. That's fine. Uh, Trespasser is not bad. Um, as it has some pretty decent uh, ward, and they have to discard a card, which is not something they want to do uh, here. If I was, if they were, uh, if they were probably, you know, drawn pretty decent. But I will play the Trespasser. I think it's something to put in their way. You know, if they play Brutal Cathar, they still have to, you know, discard a card to then target it with the Brutal Cathar effect. So I definitely think it's pretty decent, and they've drawn a pretty, pretty, pretty good hand. I would say overall. Um, so it's definitely one of those things that uh, went very well in their favor. I mean, they're already attacking for eight. Um, I am just going to have to block. It doesn't really matter here. The only thing that really helps us in this position would be a land um, and probably to wander an emperor and gain some life. But it's really, you know, we're taking seven next turn. And they probably have removal. It's definitely one of those things that, you know, the deck... It's definitely a little bit slower, uh, especially against these more aggressive decks. You know, being on the play against, uh, being on the draw against the more aggro deck is definitely one of those things. Kind of weird they went there. Um, you know, they. I think that was game. Uh, yeah, they had game, but they decided to uh, not hit us in the face. And we didn't draw... We didn't draw a land, so definitely one of those things that kind of unfortunate for us. I guess they were concerned about our Wandering Emperor creating a creature. I don't really know. On the draw again, I think our hand's fine. We have enough black mana to play Invoke Despair if we make it that far, so not bad. And we have Tenacious Underdog. We have Trespasser. Yeah, I feel like it's a good hand. It's just whether or not we're going to be playing against some super aggressive deck or if we're going to play something a little bit more, I would say, fair, like more mid-rangey or something that's not as aggressive, but... We'll have to wait and see what our opponent's doing here. All right, they're on some sort of Orzhov strategy themselves, so good for us, I think. Also have our fifth land, which is fantastic. So it is possible that they're playing um, their own Orzhov strategy, I guess. Maybe like Orzhov control, but they're playing like Doomscar. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how this sets up. So, Angels, got it. I'll swing. Probably not going to block because they probably want to play their Angel. Um, we'll play Shattered Sanctum. We'll play Trespasser. And we'll say go. And we start the Day-Night Cycle. So, if they don't play anything, then we have a pretty good attack next turn. Sure. Um, so, I mean, this doesn't really do much right now. Uh, we want to attack. We'll let it flip. So, we'll make them play double spell. Um, this could get out of hand pretty quickly just because we don't have any way to interact with their angels. Interesting. Not expect, wasn't expecting that. I guess they're going to put it on their... Angel in the air. Sure. They're also short mana, so that's a plus for us. So hopefully we can maybe draw out of it. I'll swing it for four and see what happens. It's 
so they don't do anything. Make you sacrifice one of your creatures. Probably sacrifice the Aspirant, I would say. Or Valkyrie, interesting. Rite of Oblivion is really good. So we're not we're, we're we're still in a decent spot. They're kind of pinched for mana, so good for us. We have the pressure on them. Sure, they get one angel. Um, and next turn we can actually, if we wanted to, we could almost write Oblivion twice. Um, which is a possibility. But I think we. I think we get rid of the token. What do they have in their graveyard? They have a Valkyrie? Yeah, we get rid of the token here. We'll sacrifice the Bloodhound. Or the underdog, I should say, not Bloodhound. Um, we'll swing in. Okay. I'm not sure exactly uh, what, you know, caused them to scoop. I mean, they still had a pretty decent board presence. I mean, they have a 4-4, four, four, but I guess their thought process was like swinging with the glutton. I then kill their, their, their font of hope. And maybe they only have, you know, their aspirant and their... I don't know. I don't really know. All right, we're on the play. Um, typically, I probably wouldn't keep this hand, but since we're on the play, I feel like we're in a good spot so we can be the aggressor. Which, you know, if this was, like, on the draw, I probably would have discarded since we're very top-end heavy. So hopefully we are against a good... A decent matchup, but our opponent is looking like they are also all playing some sort of Orzhov strategy, so we'll say go. We're not going to meet up for zero. There's no point. Um, just because we're not sure exactly what their what their overall strategy would be. And I think it's a matter of do we want to um, be aggressive and play Trespasser or play Announcement? I think it's the Trespasser. Make them have to discard to remove. There's nothing in the graveyard. Start the day-night cycle. If they want to vanish and verse it, they have to discard a card. So it's going to cost them two for... It's be a two for one. There's no cards in graveyard. So, I mean, just let them... They have a march, I guess, too. Is the, is, it, is the card worth it right now? Is it a threat? I mean, I don't have any plays. I'm tapped out, so... Their priority hold is because they have a play, so it's either a march or if it's or it's a a vanish inverse. Um, they could have you know the two mana removal spell that they lose to life. They're really they're really in the tank on a three drop right now. Hmm. So this is actually pretty good for us, right? For them to do that, they have to discard a card, they have to lose two life, and they also have to use a removal spell. So it's like almost like a three for one advantage us, even though they are at the higher life point total. And it looks like they're also playing angels because they discarded an angel card. Um, so they're Esper angels. Interesting. And I guess that was the, the, the hard play there was whether or not they wanted to do anything about, um, Hmm. I think we play wet announcement as much as not the most mana efficient way to do here i think wet announcement is the play uh linvala i guess is the priority hold is for their their linvala trigger if they want to sacrifice and give all their creatures hex proof or indestructible um so that's fine if we draw a land here it'd be great All right, you ask and you shall receive. So we will uh, we will invoke despair. So they lose their they lose one creature and they lose an enchantment. Which is definitely a, a plus for us, and they also lose two life. I guess they're wondering if they should sacrifice their Linvala, which is interesting. I mean, it makes them less aggressive. We get a bank buster, which is fine. And we don't attack, of course, because we're not going to attack into a 4-4. There's no point. Looks 
looks like they may be vanishing first in our uh, wedding announcement. Makes sense. They attack for four. It has vigilance, so it's good for them. It is nighttime, so that's interesting. So I think we play farmhand here. Which is kind of like an interesting play. It doesn't seem super crazy because it's like they're playing farmhand. That's not a big deal. Uh, we'll get a planes, which is good for us. We'll take that action. We'll get a planes. We'll play our planes. We will then follow that up with an Edgar. It's possible they also have counters. Okay, Edgar's good. No attacks. Edgar can't get Vanish in verse, so... And now I think we're in a good spot here as we have removal, our meat hook massacre is online. Uh, there's a lot going there's a lot going for us here. I mean if they destroy Edgar and they don't exile Edgar, we get a benefit of now Edgar produces life linkers. That's fine. We still get a token, so that we're we're good there. Um, they should have done it before the end step. Sure. Um, so, interesting play here, right? So, I could swing in with my 4-4, four, four, uh, just try to do whatever points of damage I could do, and then maybe meet up for less. I could just swing with everything, and then possibly they don't block Edgar. Um, yeah, why not? We'll swing in with everything. We have six mana, so we can definitely... Oh my goodness, that's not the blocks, my guy. It's like you should feel like something like this is happening. If like I'm swinging all out, like there's some sort of removal. Giddy is fine. By itself, it's not it's not really threatening. We'll swing it for four. Uh, we will play our land. We'll play our wedding announcement. Sure. I would say that's probably the play, but I mean, Bankbuster's fine too. I, this is card draw for us. And we can draw a card this turn, swing it for four, four next turn. We can exile their board. We definitely have some upside here. I mean, our Farewell is not really good with us having Edgar on the battlefield, so if we get that turned into an artifact in some sort of way. That'd be good. Sure. Right, nine. Sure. I mean, if they go all out here, uh, that's perfectly fine with me. Because I guess I could, in theory, um, well, I guess I could just do this, right? Hmm. I guess we fare well. It's probably the safer play. Uh, we'll exile all creatures and all graveyards. Just reset the board. I could have done a line that, you know, I could have done it slightly differently. But still think this is better. Um, was it crew too? We get another planes. Um, do we get rid of their 2 1 because they're putting more pressure on us? I guess so. Drain them for one. Exile the creature. We'll say go. That's fine. Sure. We'll uh we'll 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 draw here. Right of Oblivion's good. Um
I guess we kind of wait and see what happens, right? We have two Rite of Oblivions for whatever they play. Sure, we take two. We're at seven. We'll draw. What announcement's good? We get a treasure token. We have a creature. Sure. They haven't drawn land yet, I just realized. There's still have four lands. And we've played a land every single turn. Interesting. Sacrifice this. Make him make him go into top deck mode. Sure. I guess they're on a hope and a prayer at the moment. Yeah, you got a minus three here. I'm gonna guess they got an angel. Wow. Really flooded with lands here. Really, really flooded. I guess they give it a plus one, plus one counter. I give it vigilance would be my best guess. Probably lifelink. I would say vigilance first, then lifelink, because it's not like I can attack into it for two. They have a follow-up play. Ooh, nice. Nice top deck. I was waiting for one of those. I could have crewed, but I'd rather keep the unblocker, the unblock creature. Sure. Game's not over yet. Um, I could, I could just go ahead and I'm going to get rid of Soren here. It sounds really dumb, but I'm going to actually crew this by tapping these two and they have to block the four, four or they're dead. Well, yeah, they have to block the four, four or they can block the, they can block, I guess the two, three, but They're at one? I'm at eight. And we flip, our creatures are all bigger. And what is their top deck? Nice. Opponent goes first. Our hand's okay. It's not great. It's a little slow, but I, I think I keep. Just because this is kind of like removal. And it looks like they're playing maybe a slower deck because they did keep a tap the tap spike field hazard. So some sort of is it deck. So basically, classic is it, it looks like. A part of me wants to be aggressive, but we can't just because, uh, oh, Jeskai. 
Interesting. So it's more than likely a counter spell here. Or not. It felt like there was a it felt like there could have been because they, they played that many lands. Okay. So my thought process here is that there's probably like a big draw spell here or something for them to ramp up. Um We'll see what happens. Yep, so there's no stick. So it looks like they're playing like the Hanada, you know, Mizzix, not Mystic's Mastery. Uh, they're, like they're playing like very traditional, um, like Jeskai control. And I may, I may, I may go after their zero four this, after this, just because I don't want it to flip. Sure. That's fine. You can get rid of it. It did enough for for me. Um, they could play another big spell, so I feel like I'm almost purposely playing it this way. So I could attack for six. And then sacrifice uh, my Tenacious Underdog to get rid of their zero four. So they have six mana. So they're mill. Interesting. Jeskai mill. Huh. That's interesting. I'll play Edgar. Do you have Counterspell? No Counterspell. Put the pressure on. They're at 7. We're at 26. We have still some... We still have a good amount of cards. 33 cards in deck. So they have to... I think it's lethal because they can't leave open their hall of the storm giants here to that's exactly seven even if they haul here I mean, there's a stick, though. Sure. We need to call it, need to cast the Thunder Rebuke. Sure. And a hideous laugh there, that's fine. We don't draw again, we're at 21 cards. And we swing for seven. Opponent goes first. Our hand's actually pretty good, I would say. We have two lands. We can cast pretty much everything on curve. Other than having a one drop, I would say it's not bad. It looks like we are playing against the good old classic Mono Black. Is it good enough for Mono Black is the real question at the end of the day. I would say we're probably in a good spot. That's fine. Bunch of eye twitches. Not a big deal to me, I don't think. Um... We'll play our underdog. I feel like that kind of slows them down. Unless they want to attack in, that's fine. Yeah, it looks looks like they're being aggressive because maybe they have a follow oh, no follow-up. Alright, well we're gonna swing for three. 
We're going to follow that up with a wedding announcement. So we're the aggressor, I would say, now, because we have a way to consistently pump creatures on the battlefield, and now they're leaving back a blocker. So um, I'll still swing in because I want the card draw. I'm aware that I can draw a card, guy. I think this is a turn where we play Edgar. All right, it's fine. Sure. We'll see what they get. They could begin in environmental sciences. I mean, they haven't really shown us that they're giving us much pressure. I could also bank buster and kind of dig a little bit deeper and not play Edgar just yet and kind of wait and see. Looks like they got Necrotic Fumes. Interesting. Hmm. So I think I'm going to play Bank Buster. And then I'll say go. And then we draw a card. We get a new Underdog, which is great. Because it looks like they're going to Necrotic Fumes us, possibly. Because... Or that. Um, so maybe we can get... Um... draw um and we'll get rid of this um I'll swing in sure I actually think they should have killed the underdog there, but I guess maybe they're thinking that they're going to Necrotic Fumes. Sure. We'll play another one announcement and we'll get multiple tokens. Sure. Kind of an interesting play because I could just write of Oblivion back. They also... Oh, I exiled their Planeswalker. That's what it happened. I was like, wait, didn't I, uh... Mm, do I be aggressive? Because I feel like they would just... We'll swing for five. And we get to draw a card, or no, we get a token, a replacement token. Sure. I won't play the underdog though, because I, just in case they have another blood on the snow or something. Sure. Um. So they don't want to... Okay. I was going to say, so they don't want to kill it? And go. So definitely got the pressure. And I feel like they don't have a lot of... Um, other than a board wipe, it's not great for them. That's also a legendary artifact, so I would only be able to keep one if they blood on the snow here so next turn we could set this up with a you know a blitzed underdog because we have double wedding fest wedding uh festivities sure so i lose two life You get a card. 
Shaman Glass is fine. That's not scary. Eye Twitch is also fine. We'll draw. Uh, no, not the right one. Cancel. I'll draw. It's not like I'm gonna. They're not attacking me in this situation if I was them. Pass to attackers. My turn. Get a little vampire. Um, hmm. so it's like, do we blitz? I think we're the aggressors, so we blitz. Um, and we crew here. And we swing for 14. If they shambling gas my bank buster, that's perfectly fine with me. I have no idea what they have left in their learn board. Two of their cards are face up that I can see. They have the draw card. All right, so they got pests. Um, do I want to get anything? There's nothing in my graveyard to get. Uh, so I think we just... Oh, I already played a land. So I think we just say go. We'll draw from the Tenacious Underdog. Um, we'll draw from the tower. It's fine. I'm gonna say they're gonna get rid of Edgar here. Would be my best guess. That's fine. I feel like that's that's their play. We will uh, cycle. Underdog, get a 2-2. Two -two. Um, we'll swing in 4-4. Four -four. We'll take it. We're at 14. Uh, we'll just play some underdogs. All right, and we win. Opponent goes first. Our hand is a little bit on the slow side. A lot of tap lanes, but we have a lot of good early plays, so I think it's a keep. I think we like scour Baron's turn one or tower, and then possibly play untap lane turn two, and then possibly Bankbuster. Definitely, uh, you know, it's one of those things that it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I guess it depends on what our opponent's playing, as they are in the tank, I guess, thinking about what they want to mulligan, because it looks like they're looking to put a card back at least. It could be a tough decision, could be a close call, and it looks like they did, so they're at six cards. Uh, looks like some sort of mono white, so I think we're safe to possibly play two back-to-back -back, uh, dual tap lanes, because I don't think I want to... Okay, so some sort of Celesti. Okay, Magecraft. Got it. Um, hmm, this gets tricky, doesn't it? Uh, I think we Bankbuster. Because depending on how this goes, we may try to Rite of Oblivion here. Try to get rid of their Virtuoso, because that will allow them to kind of kind of keep on going. I could also wed an announcement, get a Chump Locker. Sure. If they keep mana open, it's definitely probably one of the, over the other. Uh, Adventure awaits. Interesting. A lot of mana. A lot of green mana. Sure. We're putting counters on things. We're conniving. We're already swinging for five. What are the chances, though, that they have... Um... Like, we have to uh, kill this this turn, or we're dead next turn. So if they have, like, Snakeskin Veil or something here, we're dead, essentially.
So it's like I have to try to target this. Or we're dead. And it looks like they're sticks, so that means they have the protection. Though if it's not... I was going to say, so if it's not Veil, vale, there's another possibility. But... Opponent goes first. I think our hand's okay. Um... We, we, we do have three lands. We can play Shatter Sanctum turn one and kind of wait and see what our opponent's doing. It's not great for us. Um, I guess we play the Shattered Sanctum on turn one and have hopefully have a creature for turn two, but it looks like Boros Aggro. Komodo's good. I think Komodo's good because um, that allows us to not, you know, be so far behind. But this is kind of one of those matchups where we want to make sure we have... Um, you know, we, we'd rather be on the play, especially in best of one, because we don't have that game two to kind of redeem ourselves. And I think that's also fine, right? Because if they're busy on not playing a bunch of things, then we're in a good spot. I mean, we're taking one point of damage. Um... Yeah, I think we just say go and kind of see what happens. I mean, this is going to be a turn where we take a decent chunk of damage. Uh, I mean, they're only one. They're whole, one hopeful initiate's going to grow. Komodo's fine. Uh, we'll get rid of their bigger hopeful initiate. We'll take four. We're at 12. Um. I mean, they don't kill Edgar, right? Edgar's probably good in this position because it's just like a big wall. I mean, if they kill it, we get a two, we get a life linker out of this, which I'm pretty happy with, because then the hopeful initiate doesn't um oh we don't get a life linker um yeah i mean they're they're mana screwed so we're good there so i mean i'd rather wait for the massacre until they kind of get a board presence of some sort but i mean we're okay if they play you know um luminarch aspirant here Do they attack, though, is the question? I mean, they could take Soren out. I'll block one. Gain two life out of it. All right, all right. We don't have enough black mana to invoke despair. Um, I'll swing it for two. I mean, I'm, I, I'm out gaining them now, and then I can wander an emperor. Kind of wait and see what happens here. I mean, they drew their third land. Wander an emperor, kill whatever creature they have. They're probably like looking like they didn't do anything. It's like more than likely I have a Wanderer Emperor. Interesting. That's a card. Um. Uh, we'll sit back. Just in case they have a haster, we can protect Wander and Emperor. Cavalier's fine. They're not... Shouldn't attack, probably, here. Another black man is awesome. Now we're doing a lot more damage, and this is probably where they scoop, because we invoke Despair. And we drain them. Sure. You can Brutal Cathar my token. Um. 
Um, I, I, I'll get, take a bunch of cards, I guess. Let's see what they do here. We'll get our 3-3. Three, three. A nice lovely 3-3 three, three, and a 3-2 and a 2-2. Two, two. Also a lifelink. They get a land. Goldspan Dragon. That's a card. Are they like Boros Midrange? Also attacking is pretty aggressive. I mean, you have to block. You can't take all of this. Okay. <laughs> and we are back. As we kind of get back into the deck list, we can take a quick look at my overall profile here on untap.gg, kind of show you how the how the games went uh, if I don't have them all here in the video. We did start off a little bit slow, losing to a Boros Aggro, losing to a Mono White, but I do think we were on the draw on both of those. Um, we did, you know, we, we did have a fair balance of being on the play than on the draw. I think I actually only have one game that I did record here with the deck on the play. Um, and the rest of all of them were all on the draw. So it's definitely one of those things that a more control deck against an aggressive format, it definitely doesn't benefit us if we're on the draw in a best of one uh, scenario. But I do think the deck still performs fairly well. Um, you know, we were at the slight disadvantage that we're only playing with cards from four sets. We're not playing with any of the older cards. So it's definitely one of those things that if we were playing with like Pathways and playing with like Blood on the Snow and things like that, maybe the games would have been a little bit differently because I do think the deck is slightly better with the older cards. And there are some cards we just don't have clear replacements for uh, currently with what we have available in our library. But still, nonetheless, for our first shot at an Orzhov Control in a post rotation like style, I think this deck list is pretty solid. Um, as we get closer and closer to rotation and maybe we get to rotation, I'll probably bring this deck out again uh, and make some tweaks based on what gets released in Dominar United. But, you know, with that being said, if you like this deck, I'll have it linked down in the description below. If you like the video, hit that like button. Definitely helps out a lot. And if you're new here, you want to know post new videos like this one here on the channel, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Just want to give a special shout out to the channel members here on my YouTube channel. You can also become a channel member yourself down below the video, hitting that join button. It definitely helps out a lot and I just appreciate you guys for your support.